Hi, this is Cheryl St. Pierre. In this video, we are going to make this sweater shawl pin that was designed specifically for my polymer clay heart beads. Um, but don't stop just because you don't have one of those. You could use an oval bead as well, but just give yourself a longer length of wire for making your pin and a longer length of wire for wrapping around your bead. And um, yeah, you can just it's not just for these beads, but this wrap, wrap that I designed here was specifically meant for this heart, but it would work on an oval too, I believe. So um, yeah, give it a try and um, check out my uh, retired video join button and see if you're interested in doing something like that. And if you enjoy this video, please hit the like. Um, consider subscribing if you're not subscribed already and thank you for joining me in this video so let's get on with it okay for tools you're going to need a ball peen hammer but if you don't have one um you could do a flat look instead of the the hammered look with just a regular hammer but you do need an anvil to hammer on i just have a piece of metal i got from a machine shop okay so i'll set that aside you're going to need your traditional tools of your chain nose pliers, your round nose pliers, your flush cutters. Um, for cutting the 14 gauge wire, I would recommend having a more a heavier cutter. But, I mean, this one will do the job. You just take the risk of um, damaging it a little bit. You will need a file, a metal file, for uh, filing the end of your uh, wire. You will need, I normally use 10 inches for my pins of the 14 gauge, which is 1.63 millimeters. Um, I'm giving myself an extra inch, so this is 11 inches. You will also need some 20 gauge wire, and I, by the way, I'm using pure copper here, raw copper. So 20 gauge wire is 0 0.81 millimeters in metric. You need a two foot length. But if, because this is for, um, specifically for the heart beads that I make, and I will offer them in a link below. Um, if I don't have any up, just write a comment there on one, uh, on something and say, hey, I'd like to get one of the, um, large heart pins for the sweater shawl. And I have... You know, you could pick different colors and I can try to accommodate making one specifically for you. And, um, let's see. The 20, I already mentioned the 14 gauge and 11. Yes, yes. Okay. For beads, of course, I'm using the heart bead. Um, you could use a larger stone, an oval. But if you do, you will need... A larger pin so a little bit extra wire there and you will need more 20 gauge wire as well so just allow yourself some more wire if you're using a larger um, bead and I'm using two four millimeter bicones as decoration in my wire you could use any type of four millimeter bead that you want it could be gemstone it could be crystals rondelles round you, you name it you could put it in there i think the you just need a four millimeter in the width so that it's 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 going to be between wires so it needs to be smallish you could do smaller too you could do a three millimeter bead that would work as well okay i mentioned the file i think i've mentioned everything I am also using a silicone mat to put my um, anvil on because underneath this paper that's my background is a ceramic tile and I don't want to break the ceramic tile with hammering. So I think we're ready to start. So the first thing you're going to need is your 14 gauge wire and your file. And we need to um, file the end of it Actually, no, not yet. We are going to try and make a curve with your round nose plier. And then we'll have to snip some off. 
because it doesn't quite make a full proper curve. It always has a bit of straight wire there. So we want to cut that off. And I am using my snips because that's what I have here. Okay, now that we're at that point, before you wrap any more, let's file that as best we can so it doesn't have any sharpness that could cut somebody. Although we will be hammering it, it still has the possibility of, um, and it's going to shake my camera. I'll try not to rest my hand there for support. So I'm just holding the wire like this and and hopefully we can get it fairly reasonable. There's still some right inside. It's still sharp there. I'm going to see if I can pinch it in maybe. Nope, it's good. Got to really try and get that sharpness off. There, I think I succeeded. Okay, so I'm going to continue making my coil now. Now you can, can um, do it as far as you can while still being able to hold onto the center with your round nose pliers. And mine curled up on me, so I'm just um, flattening it out like that. And let's see if I can get a little bit more in there. And did that again. And I think that's good. We just need enough just to be able to put the pin in there later on. So now what we need to do is we're going to round this out and we need to make enough room because the heart's going to sit on it like this and then the pin's going to be up here. Whoop, up here. I'm out of camera. Um, sorry. The heart is going to sit like this but we're going to round it out to hold it because we need to make room for it because the wire is going to go through so through around here so we need that much room up above it so we're going to make the pin accommodate so um and i am just this needs to sit like this and then we're going to arch it around like this we want it nicely rounded. Okay, so how's that look? I'm doing it upside down. We just felt awkward. So we want it to look nice too. So if it's kinky, <laughs> um, excuse my terminology, but if it gets kinks in it, we need to um, kind of adjust it so it still looks flowy is a nice way to put it. And I'm thinking that should accommodate the bead just not quite as flowy as mind you once we start hammering it it's gonna adjust it too that should be that should be enough i'm gonna put the pin on now i mean the bead sorry put the pin in the bead and it's these um beads are a little bit on the grippy side so i'm gonna use the pliers to push it in And I even used the drill to make the hole bigger. 
just can't go overly big. Oh my goodness. I've had the wire in there many times. There we go. Just had to get it started. Oh, it actually pushed where I didn't want it to push. But that will be covered in the design. Okay. So I want it to sit like this. Oh, that's definitely enough. That's more than enough. That's probably too much. So it's good to put your bead on just to see where it's at. Okay, so we want it about like that. Okay. Yeah. That looks good. I might just arch it a bit more. Okay. Now I'm going to slide the bead back so that the next step is to hammer this. So we want to hammer it for on, on the coil as well as to about where the bead is going to sit or just before it. So I'm going to put my silicone mat down. And grab my hammer and hammer. Hopefully it isn't too loud. So I'm going to continue hammering off screen because it feels loud to me. Okay, so I've done the hammering and I've got it about here. And that's about where the bead's going to sit. Right there. And then the next step. Maybe even push it in a little bit further. Okay. The next step is to grab your 20 gauge wire. And fold it in. Or bend it in half. So it's got a big loop like this at the approximate middle. And that's just so that we can take this and wrap around the pin wire in order to secure it. And now I'm taking my chain nose pliers and just squishing that together like that. Okay, and now, um, let's see, we want to do a clockwise swirl. Okay, so you've got your heart like this. And we're doing a little clockwise swirl. This can slide around, but I just want the heart out of the way. Okay. Go completely around but we're gonna stop right here so it's facing up and the inner wire we're going to put our first bicone on so this wire and I'm just I'm out of camera putting the bead on the end of the wire okay and then we're going to continue with wrapping that around like that it flipped on me so it's like this the hearts there we're going to slide it on over and we're going to um, actually kind of bend it underneath like this but we're going to go behind the heart now so it's just looking like this nothing fancy just a little bit simple zigzag got a bead and then back here for extra support, we're just going to put a, a loop. You don't have to put the loop. I just think it gives a little bit extra support. Okay, so now we are um, just looking at my example here. We are coming around the front. And we're coming around the back, but you want a distance between the wire and the heart right there. Okay. And I'm just going to slide this. It moved on me. 
make sure I'm in screen here. And I'm coming up like this from behind. And now I'm going down like this. And we're going to make a, a nice, smooth spiral like this. But it's going to head into the heart. So I'm flipping it upside down. I just, you want it really nice and smooth. And you want it to go like that. And now we're going to put a bicone on this wire. And the bicone's going to sit about there. So I'm putting the bicone on the wire out of screen. Because there isn't enough room to show you. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to do another clockwise loop. This one was counterclockwise. I should have said that. Now we're going to make a clockwise loop right here. Not too big. And if it splits apart like that, bonus. Because it just adds more drama. It does, but you want, we're going to flip around to the back, so we want it past that tip and up a bit, like that, so it can grip the heart a little bit better, and I'm holding it down and flipping it, flipping it, uh, pushing it against the heart, okay, and we're almost done. Now, isn't that pretty already? And so now, we're ready to, see, I gave extra wire, that's good. And um, we're going to snip it off about there just to give us length for finishing. And so that would be from the edge of the heart one and a half centimeters, 15, 16 millimeters, something in, the, in there like that. And you'll see why. Because we're about to finish it off. We are now going to take those. and draw them through and pull them back. Well, I could have given myself two centimeters length. And you can, if you have the length, give yourself, make two loops on the end. I don't have room for that. So I'm just gonna tuck mine in right here. And it's being stubborn. course on camera that's when it happens right make sure there's no pokes I want to bend it more tuck right in there no pokes anywhere secured and there that part's done the heart is on and that's the look that we're aiming for Okay, so the next thing is to make the rest of your pin. And so we want to do the coil right here. So we're going to do a nice, this is counterclockwise. And this is the spring of the pin. See, I'm glad I gave 11 inches, and 11 inches is a little tight, so I'm going to actually push this on over a little bit and curl this up and back a little bit. So you could give yourself 12 inches if you, if you feel you need that. Just, see, I've got enough with 11. I just made some adjustments, and it's plenty big enough. I want to slide that heart just a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm just going to adjust this loop so it looks better. Okay, and I see that my wire here is 
needs straightening, so I'm actually going to straighten it with my pliers. Not really happy with this shape here. I'm going to modify a little bit till I'm happy with the look of it. Okay, so that looks a bit better. Hmm. I just can't get it to where I like it. I normally don't have this problem. I think it's because we're modifying the pin so much. So I'm going to bend this, bend this. And try straightening this again. Still doesn't look right. get it there <laughs> there I do recommend that you watch my other videos because it honestly this is not good okay I think that's better Now you want to smooth this out as best you can so it looks flowing again. That's the look I'm aiming for, is the flowingness. Straighten this out again. Now I'm just flipping my picture for my old one. Okay, maybe that's it because I didn't have my picture the right way. Okay, so I wanted it more. Yes, that looks better. That looks better. So you want it actually coming across here. And I did, I had it here and it just looked awkward. So I want it to have that right there. And it just makes a world of difference. Isn't that silly? Okay, so now I'm going to, well, for one, this could be smaller. And I took away the flowingness of it. Kinked up. It's been at least six months since I've made one of these. Hmm.
there. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so the next step is to support this, open this up, and that's where you can test how the pin is going to sit, and it's going to sit like that, and that, I am happy with that shape much better. I just want this a little bit straighter, and it's okay to mar the wire a bit because we're going to be hammering it. I'm not hammering. I'm not um, trying to mar it, but it it you know it's most likely will get marred. Okay, so then the next step, I need to open this up a little bit more so it sits right, okay, is uh, we need to snip off the end at an angle like this. And I'm going to file just to get the sharpness off of it. Might have to file it more than once. Might have to file it again after hammering. That is a, a check and see kind of thing. Okay, you want it at an angle. Remember this is a sweater shawl. It's meant to go and loosen it. It can, um, you, if you have a dressy, drapey um, scarf that you wear, it can go on that. So it's not going to be sharp because it should be on a fairly loose uh, knit. It looks great on a cowl neck sweater too. If if you ever wear those in the winter time. So the reason I came up with this design is when I did my other ones, I had um, multiple pe people asking me to make more. But, you know, every time I do it, it's I do end up with a different design. I mean, this one I've done multiple times so that I can teach you. Um, so I know it's doable to do this one wrap over and over again. But I encourage you to experiment make it your own I like the way the flow goes on the heart I really like how that turned out okay now we're going to do hammering again and I dropped my silicone mat okay so what we will do is I'm just going to open this up a little bit we're going to hammer from here to as far as we can get away with, um, without, so basically there, I mean, you, you can get away with just going up to here, but I'm going to try hammering all the way up to here this time, but I am going to hammer off camera, so I'll be back. Okay, so I've got a lot of the hammering done. I just wanted to say for the end we want to flare it out so you're going to hammer extra to widen this out okay so I've got it flared pretty good so the next step is to actually uh, because it bends this way we're just going to flatten it gently tapping it because we don't want to wreck the, the um, prettiness of this side and if your wire was, um, you know, crooked like mine was, I just opened up my pin a little bit more and tapped this way. Because then it's, you know, straightens it somewhat that way. Now I'm going to move it up a little bit more. Okay, like that. And it looks good. I think it's done. All we have to do, I'm just going to move this out of the way. And grab my file again and I think I want to file it and I'm actually gonna go like this because it rounded out when I hammered it and I want it to have an angled look 
see if I can get that angled look. I found my old set of files and they are so much sharper than my my new ones, my new ones, I have to file forever. These ones really work so well. Wow. Okay. So that's done. And, um, oh, I do like how that turned out. Even though I had so many struggles. It's good for you to see that I have struggles too. I normally don't have that struggle, but I did this time. So you just want it to have that flowy type of look and uh I like the way it sparkles there okay well thank you for joining me in this video god bless uh consider seeing my um facebook page where i am trying to sell my beads support me that way um that would be greatly appreciated and again god bless again and uh, we will see you in the next one Bye for now.